everyone and my name is Bowie Stover. I use they them pronouns. Welcome to our very first introduction to body weight training. Now before we begin I'd like to thank Drummond Street Services and Queer Space for partnering up with us so that we can bring you these videos. Without them we would not be able to reach out and just give you some support while you're um, stuck at home. <laughs> Before we jump into the session, I'd also like to acknowledge that this recording is done on the stolen lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. I pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging. So our session today is going to have a bit of a focus on getting some stretch, getting some movement into our joints and then doing a little bit of work that'll kind of get, get those muscles woken up get our souls feeling just fresh, feeling energized. It's not gonna to be too intense. Now I'll be giving you some variations for stuff if you're finding things might be too challenging in a, a kind of standard movement. And I'll also be giving you some tips on props that you can use if you need to, that just from around your home, just to make these movements a bit easier. But for the most part, they're gonna be super simple non-threatening, please don't feel worried. <laughs> this is going to be something that's going to leave you feeling totally obliterated or anything like that. It's a nice chill introduction to how you can just move your body. You'll be following along to me as we work through just a handful of movements just to help you get you started. So we're going to begin with the warm-up. It's really important when we start moving our bodies that we kind of get the blood flowing to all of the parts of our bodies because sometimes when we don't move our bodies a lot and we feel stiff it's because we're not necessarily getting enough blood to the areas that we need not enough movement to help our bodies really kind of lubricate the flow of our muscles so we're going to start at our heads we want to work our whole way down our body so to get started you want to stand nice and tall shoulders relaxed away from the ears and we're going to work with our necks so we're going to start gently looking up just as far as you can, not letting your head drop back at all. And then looking down, tucking your chin towards your collarbone. And we're gonna alternate this nice and slow. And we're gonna do 10 in each direction. So that's three, that's four, making sure we're keeping our shoulders nice and relaxed. That's five, that's six. If you're feeling any discomfort from this, Try not to push your head too far beyond where it's comfortable. So that's eight. <laughs> so just working within your limits. So if you can't get all the way up and all the way down, just go as far as you can before it causes any sort of discomfort. Once we've done 10, we're gonna tilt our ears down to our shoulders. So we're gonna keep our shoulders nice and low. We're relaxing here with the shoulders and allowing our neck to do the moving. Now don't expect too much movement from this one as we do it because this is an angle of our neck that we can't really get a whole bunch of movement on. And we're gonna do 10 in each direction. That's about four, <laughs> close to it. We're gonna go five, six. Don't be surprised if one side can get a little bit lower than the other side as well, seven. It's often very common. It's eight. We're not pushing to the point of severe discomfort either. Just as far as we can go, 10. That's it. Now we're gonna look left and right. We're gonna bring our head to the right. We're gonna try and line our chin up with our collarbone just as much as we can. Remember keeping our shoulders nice and relaxed. They're not moving forward. This is not a neck movement. This is trick, our brains can sometimes trick us into thinking that if other parts of our body are moving, that the part we're trying to move is, but it's, sometimes it just gets tricked like that. So we're gonna to look to the right, and we're gonna to look to the left. And we're gonna do 10 of these, nice and slow. Try and keep your chin as level as possible. Three, four, keeping your shoulders relaxed, it's five, that's six. So you might notice like little clicking, swishing noises with this as well. That's seven. This can be quite common. Just getting the fluids to our joints kind of moving when they're not necessarily used to being shifted around like this. 
especially now that we're not out and crossing roads and not having to look left and right so often. Oh, it's about 10. Now we're gonna move on to our shoulders. So I'm gonna give you two options here. If you're someone who has um, issues with your shoulders, maybe doing a, um, a big movement might be a little bit much. So the two variations are gonna be, we're gonna either keep our arms straight up and circle the whole way back. And we're gonna do 10 backwards and 10 forwards. We're gonna do this on each side, That's six. But if you can't bring your shoulder arm all the way up, you're just gonna circle like this. So whichever option that you want, you're gonna do 10 of. And once we've done 10 of either of those, we're gonna reverse it. So if you're doing a shoulder shrug, we're just gonna do 10 in that opposite direction. If you're doing a windmill arm, we're gonna do a full combined. That was about 10. So I'm gonna swap sides. So this side, pick whichever one is comfortable to you. And we're gonna go 10 backwards. We're keeping this other arm nice and relaxed at our side. That's all right. That's nine. And that's 10. And then we're gonna bring it forwards. Nice and slow. We want, we want it to be a nice control movement. We're not just like flailing our arms around. Not actual windmill arms. That's about seven. Let's go eight, nine, and 10. Oh, I'm starting to feel a little bit, a little bit like things are working there. <laughs> We're gonna move on to our wrists next because these are a part of our body that we probably don't really think about moving too often. So you're just gonna take your hands. I like to hold them in front because it just makes it easier. And we're just going to circle inwards like we're scooping something towards us. So we're gonna go 10. There's five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And then we're gonna back that way. We're gonna push it away because we don't want it anymore. <laughs> we're indecisive like that. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Anyway, you might get some clicks and pops. So long as it's not painful, totally okay. Sometimes just getting movement to our joints can make little clicks and pops and stuff happen like that. So moving down our body now, we're gonna to go to our hips. So moving on to our hip circles. Once we have our feet somewhere around hip width apart, our slows, our toes, not our slows, if you've got slows, I'm impressed. Our toes are gonna to be pointing slightly outwards. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna put our hands on our hips because it just gives our hands a job. Otherwise, they kind of just dangle around a little bit and it can be a little bit weird. We're gonna put our hands in our hips. We're gonna push our hips as far forward as we can without losing balance. And then we're gonna push them out to the side and then around the back, sticking our butts out as far as we can, coming around to the other side. Nice, big, slow circle. And we're gonna continue this. We're gonna do 10. So that's two. You might feel that you get stuck on some corners here. You might have a little bit more of an octagon as opposed to a circle with these. And that's totally okay. Sometimes we have tightness through our hips. That just can limit some little spots from stretching as much as we want them to. And that's about four. Let's go five. Six. Seven. Remember, we want our hips moving, not our chest. So we want to keep our chest up. It's eight, because it can be really easy to think that if our chest is moving, that our hips are. And that's 10, but it's not the case. We're going to go back the other way now. Remember, keeping your eyes forward will help you keep your chest up. And we're going to go back 10 in this opposite direction. You might find they both directions feel a little bit different. Maybe one direction is easier than the other side. That's totally okay, because it's just where you're at. Nothing's good or bad, it just is. That's about four, so five. We're going roundabout numbers here. <laughs> and six, seven, eight, it's nine, and that's 10. Oh, whew. Moving on now, we're gonna bring our feet together because we're going to come to knee circles. 
Now, knee circles are probably not something that you would commonly think are possible. And we don't want to go a big movement with these. And if you're someone who's had knee issues, just be really careful with these ones. If you find you get pain or discomfort, maybe just uh, take a moment and not do them because we don't want to cause injury here. What we're going to do, we're going to place our hands on our knees because again, it gives our hands a job and we don't want them just dangling about feeling a little bit awkward. So hands on the knees, you're going to dip your knees forward a little bit and then just gently do a little circle. Nice and controlled here. I'm going to go for 10. So just three, four, bring it up to straight at the top, back down. It's five, six, seven. These ones you might find are a little bit hard to balance. It's eight, nine, and 10. If you're finding it a little bit challenging to do these with your feet together, you can always bring them apart just a little bit and back in the opposite direction. One. Two. You don't want to go too wide, but just as wide as you can to stay stable. It's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Standing up nice and straight. We're going to move on to our ankles, ankle circles. So this one, if you do find you have a challenge standing on one foot, because these ones are gonna require us to just lift our foot and then do, do 10 circles in one direction and 10 in the other. If you're finding you're having trouble balancing, you can keep your toes on the ground. You might not get as much movement going. So you can also hold like a broomstick or a wall, a chair, just something to kind of give you a little bit of stability. Um, so if you need to grab something just to give yourself a little bit of balance, extra balance, totally do it. <laughs> what we don't want is you falling over right now. But we're gonna take our right foot first, we're gonna lift it up, and we're gonna do 10 nice controlled ankle circles. That's about five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Now it's okay if these ones are not so circular and a little bit like maybe D-shaped or square or whatever. Totally okay. We're back in the other direction now. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And we're gonna swap sides. And you might find one side is actually easier to balance on on one foot than the other. Totally okay. We're gonna go ten. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and back of the way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now, as you might find you've got some clunking and popping going on there, that's okay. As with um, a lot of our joints, when we don't necessarily move them in these directions frequently, just we can get some clunks and pops as things get moving again. If it's not painful, it's okay. And you can feel a bit weird, you might feel things crunching, you might hear things doing strange stuff, but the more you move your joints, the more smoothly they start to move. So don't worry if you're getting clicks and pops and stuff, so long as it's not painful. We're going down to the ground now. Okay, so we've made our way down to the floor. What we're gonna do now Let's get on our hands and knees, put our toes onto the floor. We're gonna have active feet. I think we'll be active feet because from here, we're able to lift our knees up off the floor. And what we're gonna do is push our hips back as far as we can. We're pushing our heels down towards the floor as much as possible. Now we've got two variations of this I'm gonna show you. Our first one, once we're here, you're just gonna bring your weight forward over your hands Drop your hips down, look back up behind you as far as you can, coming back up to our start position. So that's our first option. Our second option, what you can do from this position is actually bend your elbows, scoop down, and then to the same position at the bottom. And then push the hips back, coming back to our start position. So we're gonna go through 10 of these, which with whichever of those options that you like. 
I'm going to do the first option just so you can follow along with me if that's the one you're most comfortable with. So let's go, pushing our heels towards the floor, we drop our hips forward, shift our weight over to our hands, let our hips drop down, or hover just above the floor and we look up behind us. We slowly bring ourselves back, that's it, there's one. Let's go for two, breathing out as we stretch forward, breathing in, let's go again. What was that, like three, maybe four, well, somewhere around there, let's go again. No, we're stretching, so it doesn't matter, we're just going to feel into the stretch, looking back. Ah, oh, that's the way. Nice and slow. Nice and controlled. Now you don't have to get your hips as low to the ground as I am. Just wherever they get to is where they're going to get to. Or you'll make sure in this bottom position that you're looking back as far as you can. That's the way. That's maybe about seven. We'll do three more. Eight. It is now. <laughs> Nine. And that's about ten. Finishing off back in our starting position. Oh, now we can bring our knees back down to the floor. Oh, fix our clothes up probably got a bit messed up and now we're going to go to some wrist stretches. Now I'm going to face front on for you. So we're going to be down on your knees. We're going to take our hands. We're going to rotate them outwards as far as we can and then we're going to bring them down to the floor as close to your knees as is comfortable. And then you're going to gently sit back down onto your heels until you're feeling a stretch up this part of your arm. Remember keeping your palms as flat on the floor as possible. If your heart, palms are lifting up, it's not going to get the stretch. So what you can do is just shift your butt away from your heels a little bit because if you're too far down, you don't have that flexibility, then you're not going to get that stretch. So you're just finding that spot. And we're going to do about a 30 second count. It's a pretty loose 30 seconds, so <laughs> thereabouts is going to be just fine. I'm just going to sit, we're just going to breathe. And you might be surprised at how tight that your forearms are actually feeling. This is not really a stretch that we ever do very often, and you might find that you're even getting feelings in your palms, your hands, or your fingers. They might feel really tight, like this, the skin is stretching a lot. That's all. Okay, <laughs> any feelings that you're having, provided it's not pain, is okay. And that's about 30 seconds. So we're gonna take our hands now, gently bring them up off the floor. If we need to, we can give them a little shake out. We're gonna to go to backs of our hands onto the floor, fingers pointing towards our knees. And we're gonna do the same thing again, keeping the backs of our hands on the floor and sitting back onto our heels as far as we can go. And we're gonna do another 30 seconds, a loose 30 seconds here. This time, what we're aiming for is to stretch up this side of our arm. Now you might even find in this position that you get some weird tingling in your fingers, a sensation in other areas. That's okay. Feelings in our body like this when we put ourselves into new positions are totally okay. You just want to remember in this position, keep your shoulders down away from your ears. It can be easy to shrug. We don't want that. The shoulders stay down, nice and low. I was taught shoulders are poison to the ears, so we don't want them to be close. <laughs> I'm just going to breathe in this position. I'm going to feel the feelings we're having in our arms, in our hands, and be okay with them, so long as it's not painful. If it's painful, we don't want that, so you might need to just ease some pressure off by lifting your butt away from your heels. Oh. That's about 30 seconds. We're going to give our wrists a bit of a shake out. Moving on now. I'm going to come and do this one sideways for you. 
So you're going to come on quadruped, which is on all fours, because we've got four points of contact, quadruped. And from here, we're going to turn our hands over. And we're going to have our wrists under our shoulders, and our fingers are going to be facing each other. And we're going to use our, our hips and legs here to support quite a bit of our weight. And we're going to slowly lower our chest down to the floor as far as you comfortably can. And you're going to gently push back up and at the top, you're going to close your fists and roll your wrists up until your wrists are nice and straight, stacked over your hands. And then we're going to slowly roll them back open and drop them down. We're going to do 10 of these, nice and slow, nice and controlled, not letting your fingers lift up off the ground at all. And if you're finding it too hard or as you roll down, you're thudding, just try and take some more of that weight off your hands by bracing with your hips. Let's just go for three, four, five, six. And that's it. Seven. So these are a good one for just starting to develop some wrist strength. That's eight, because what we're asking our wrists to do is just take a little bit of weight and straighten up. That's it. Nine. That could be nine. This could be ten. Close enough. We'll finish up as though this is ten. It could be. It could not be. <laughs> but we're going to keep this position now. And keeping our fists closed and under our shoulders, what we're going to do is just gently lower ourselves down and straighten up. We're going to do ten just like this. Remember, taking as much weight as you need to make this manageable without having you losing control or dropping down towards the floor. That's about four. That's five. Six. That's seven. That's eight. Two more. That's nine. That's ten. Now, lucky last warm-up movement for today. We're going to be back in our quadruped position and all we're going to do now, making sure that our hips are taking as much weight as necessary. We're going to raise our palms up off the floor but we really want to remember we're keeping our fingers down here. So fingers stay on the floor. You may not be able to get this high, you may only get this high. Wherever you're getting to, that's where you're going to get to and that's okay. We're going to do 10. Just raising our palms up, keeping our fingers down. One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then relaxing. Oh, we're nice and warm now. Warm up is done. <laughs> now we're going to jump into our first part of today's session. Now that we've got the warm-up out of the way, well that was technically the first part, but now we're going to get into some uh, just more in-depth mobilizations. We're going to go through three movements and we're just going to cycle through them nice and slowly. So we're going to get started by laying on our back. Oh. So wherever you may be, you don't need more space than this. And what you're going to do, once you find yourself comfortable, you're going to lift your legs up into the air. Keep them as straight as you can. If you can't get them completely straight, that's okay. You get to where you get to. We're going to bring our arms up as well. So we're going to challenge our brains a little bit here because we're going to get our right hand and our left foot and we're going to move them away from each other all the way down as far as they can go. But at the same time, we want to keep our right foot and our left hand up in the air. We're going to come back. And then we're going to do the opposite side. I want to do cycle through just 10 alternating left and right. So that's two, three, four. Just getting as far down as you can. It's okay if you can't reach the floor. Five. It's okay if you can't keep your legs completely straight. Six. That's it. If you're having discomfort in your back, you can pop a towel under your lower back just to give yourself a little bit more support. A seven, just kind of under your hips here to elevate them a little bit. What was I up to? 
I think that was eight. I'm not sure if that was a side, but we'll go with that. Nine. <laughs> One more. And ten. Nice. Bringing our legs down, bringing our hands down. We're going to gently sit up. Ugh. Oh, now, let's fix ourselves up. And we're going to go sitting cross-legged. If you can't sit cross-legged, feel free to have your feet separate. Feel free to pop one over the top, just as close as you feel comfortable to kind of this sort of position. And what we're going to do is just reach our hands. We're going to go to the left first. Reach our right hand, and we're just going to hold it on our knee, on our left knee. So right hand to left knee. It's like a game of that game where you'd spin the disc and put your hand on the colored spot. Yeah, that. <laughs> right hand. Left knee, left hand. We're going to bring it around as far behind us as we can go. We're going to breathe in and breathe out. I'm just going to try and gently turn. You can use that right hand pulling on your knee just to try and stretch you around. I'm going to breathe in, I'm going to breathe out. I'm going to try and push a little bit further. One more breath. Breathe in, breathe out. A little bit further and slowly coming back. Now that can be really challenging because it's quite an uncomfortable position to be in. So trying to breathe and relax, I get not as easy as what the words are making it out. So if you're finding it a bit challenging or it's not quite so easy to breathe in and out, feel free to just not push quite so far. Go to where you're still able to easily breathe. So we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. We're going to take our left hand, comes to our right knee. Take our right hand, we're going to reach it as far back around behind us as we can, and we're just going to turn. Now, you might find one side is actually tighter than the other. This can be really common, but it's got to do with our handedness. So, for myself, I'm finding my right side quite a bit tighter, but I'm right handed. So, the side we use more often is often a bit tighter. And we're going to breathe in and out. Try and creep a little bit further around. Let's go again. One more time. Breathing in and down. Oh, slowly coming back. Oh, taking a moment, give our shoulders a little circle if we need to. And we're going to come now onto our hands and knees. So, from this position, we're going to take our left hand and our right foot. And we're going to reach them out and we're going to balance in this position. So feel free to shift this foot about wherever you need to, to kind of make a bit more of a stable point. If you find that you're tipping, you can bring that foot out just a little bit and that can help to make you stable. If you find that you're getting discomfort because we're going to be extending like this, if you find that it becomes too much, just work through as many as you can. If you need to do one, then bring your hand back down and then do another to bring your, work, your hand back down. Totally okay. Do as many as you can while we cycle through these. There's no compulsory amount that you should do. We work to 10 just because it's a nice round number. So let's go. Left hand, right foot. Once we're here, we're going to do some little circles. We're going to do 10 little circles. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Now we're going to reverse them. Oh my gosh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Place a hand back down, place a foot back down. We're going to swap sides. So right hand comes out, left foot comes out. Then we're going to circle. Circle whatever direction you want. You want your hands to kind of circle. So I'm circling to the left. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then back the other way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, alrighty. So those are the three movements we're going to work through. We're going to run through this again two more times. So starting on our backs, legs are up in the air, arms are up in the air. And we're going to go right hand, left foot, 
no, that was my right foot. <laughs> Let's try this again, left foot. <laughs> Sometimes our brains get confused. This is why it's a challenge in coordination. <laughs> One, two, three. Remember just getting to where you get to. Four, it's five. Six, seven, he's getting hard. Let's go eight. That's it, two more. Nine, lucky last. Ten. Oh, bringing our arms and legs down. Oh, rolling over into our sitting position. Fixing ourselves up because we must always be tidy when we move. Getting yourself back into whatever cross-legged or close to cross-legged position is comfortable. Even if you can't get your legs crossed, just having them out in front of you in some way, just so you can brace against those knees, it's totally fine. So, I'm gonna to turn to our left again. Taking your right hand, it comes to our left knee. Our left hand reaches around this time. Breathe in. Just trying to really creep it around. Let's go again, breathing in, breathing out. One more time. Breathing in, breathing out. And coming back. You might find this time through you're getting a little bit more rotation. That's because we've had a chance to warm up a little bit. So we take our left hand, Plop it on our right knee. We're going to take our right hand. We're going to bring that around behind us. And we're going to breathe in. We're going to breathe out. And we're going to work our way around backwards. Two, one. Let's go again. Breathe out. We're going to creep further. One more. slowly coming back. Oh, that side is definitely getting looser, which is nice. Coming onto all fours again into our quadruped position. I'm going to take left hand, right foot. I want to reach them out. Let's go. We're going to circle one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and, and then back the other way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Going down. Oh. Swapping sides. Reaching out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Back the other way, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And relaxing. Now it doesn't matter if they aren't really circles, sometimes they can be square, sometimes they've just kind of a bit of a zigzag thing going on. Totally okay. We're not aiming for kind of perfect, we're just trying to get that some sort of movement <laughs> going on. So where you're at is with those, if it's not a circle, if it's not, don't worry about it. Doing perfectly, just with what you're doing. This is our last time through. Coming down onto our backs, bringing our legs up, bringing our arms up, and let's go. Right hand, left foot. One. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two more, nine, last one, ten. Ah, oh, and relaxing. Oh, rolling up, nice and slowly, however you feel comfortable. 
coming into our cross-legged position. We're going to go right hand to left knee. Left hand to the back. And we're going to breathe in. Breathe out. Creep around <laughs> in a non-creepy way. <laughs> we're going to go again. And last time. And swapping sides nice and slowly. Left hand, right knee. Right hand, where are you going around? Let's go breathing in. And we'll breathe out and creep. Let's go again. And last time. Oh, all right. Well, last time we're going on our hands and knees. We're taking our left hand and our right leg. Bring them up. Let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and back the other way. One, two, three. And swapping sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and back the other way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we have it, our first part down. Oh. So, moving on to part two now, we're gonna stay down on the floor just for the moment. And we're going to just work through two movements in this round. Now, our first movement is gonna be on the floor, then we're gonna pop up and have some fun standing. So, we're gonna start. Now there's two ways you can do this movement. You're welcome to do it from your knees, keeping your feet together, dropping your hips forward and keeping your back nice as straight as you can. Or your alternative is to come up onto your toes, feet around hip width apart. Now either way that you do this variation is fine. What you want to focus on is not allowing your hips to swing from side to side. And what we're going to do, I'll demonstrate two of each variation before we pop into this. We're going to go, if we're from our knees, you're going to bring your hand up just to tap your chest. If you're coming up from your toes, hands under the shoulders, shoulder width apart. That goes for both variations actually. And feet are a bit wider so that you can just alternate. Nice and slow, nice and controlled. So pick whatever variation you feel most comfortable with and we're going to go 10, 10 all up. So alternating left and right, which makes five each side. So when we're ready, we set up into our position that we're choosing to be in and we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Whew. How is that? Feeling it a little bit. <laughs> now, we're going to jump up to our feet. So when you're ready, hopping up, however you are able to. If you need assistance with a, something to hold on to, that's totally okay. If not, we're going to pop up. And we're up. So now, what we're going to do is a squat. 
I'm sure you may have been dreading this one. They always show up. <laughs> and then they can be a little bit of a challenge. I will show you two variations with this one as well. You can do it freestanding if you're doing it this way. Feet are hip width apart. Toes are facing slightly outwards. And all we're going to do, we're going to take our hands, put them in front of our chest. This keeps them out of the way, doing a job, not letting us grab our legs to help push ourselves back up. And what we're going to do if we're doing it, it's just a freestanding squat. Dip the knees and push the hips back at the same time. We're going to come down and back up nice and smoothly. Coming down as low as you can. You don't have to be able to come down as low as I'm going. Just to wherever you can get to. Now, if you don't feel comfortable doing it just freestanding or because you find that your heels come up or anything like that, you can use a chair or a bench. So if you've got a bench to use, you're gonna stand about a half, a half of a foot length in front. Feet hip width apart, toes slightly outward still. And we're gonna do exactly the same thing, just reaching back, sitting down into our chair, standing back up. You don't want to plop down, we're not actually sitting. We're just tricking our butt. We're gonna go, we're gonna sit, we're gonna sit. Where's that chair, where's the chair? Oh, touched it, stand back up. And it just allows a little bit more support. And if you do find that you get stuck at the bottom, at least you got something to sit on and you're not gonna to have to plop down onto the floor. <laughs> so we're gonna work through six of these. Now, we're gonna add a little, a little kicker to the end of this. On our sixth squat, we're gonna to get to the bottom and we're gonna hold it there for 10 seconds. <gasps> Ooh, fingers ready. So you wanna set yourself up. Find wherever you're comfortable. If you need to grab a chair, grab a chair. It's totally okay. And we're ready. We're just gonna do six really slow, comfortable as you can be squats. <laughs> Okay, feet are set up, our toes are pointing slightly outwards. My hands are in front of my chest. I'm gonna dip my knees. I'm gonna come down as low as I can and come back up. That's one, two, that's it, three, almost there, that's halfway. Four, that's five. Now remember at the bottom of this sixth one, we're gonna hold it for 10 seconds. And we're down, ready? One, two, three, four, five. It's halfway, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, coming back up out of that one. Whew. Good thing we're following that with hopping back down onto the floor. Turn back to our chest taps. Back down on the floor again. Are we ready for these chest taps? So if you have found you had trouble last time, you can try changing this up. If you tried it on your toes, where it was a little bit adventurous and found it that even halfway through you had to drop down, actually, that's totally okay. We're working with where we're at and you challenging yourself that little bit is awesome. Well done. So we're gonna set us up in whatever variation we feel comfortable doing. And we're gonna go for 10 alternating left and right. Are we ready? Remember our hips are nice and tight. Hands under our shoulders, hands uh, shoulder width apart. And we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Relaxing those knees gently down to the floor. If you did use your toes. <laughs> Alrighty, we're back to our squats again. Popping it back up. What's up and down here? Like, who decided to do this? <laughs> Getting up however we can. Whew. Here we are again, ready for squats. Got another six coming this time, remember again? The bottom of that sixth squat, we're gonna hold it for 10 seconds. I know you're thinking, Bowie, why did you think to do that? I sometimes ask myself those questions when I write programs for myself as well. And it's because it's good for us. <laughs> so we're setting us up and get up again. If we're doing a freestanding squat, we're ready to go. If we need to, we'll use a chair. We're at half foot distance in front of the chair. Feet are somewhere around hip width. They can be a bit wider. Don't go narrower. If you're finding you're having trouble, it may be that your feet are a bit too narrow and you might need to just try adjusting them. Bring them out a little bit wider. 
turn your toes out just a little bit more. And then what we're gonna do, hands in front of the chest, push our hips back, dip our knees, and come down. You notice at the bottom here, my knees are facing the same direction as my toes. That's what we wanna really try and follow here. That's one. We're going for six. It's two, making sure our knees push outwards. That's it. Three. It's halfway. Four, coming up on our nice hold. Two to go. Five. That's it. Now remember at the bottom of this one, we're holding for 10 seconds. Six, let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh my gosh. If you need to, give those legs a little bit of a shake out. We've got one more round to get through. Yes. <laughs> And we're coming down. Oh, here we are for our last round. Back down on the ground, getting into position. So it's okay to have a little breather in between each of these as well. Don't feel like you gotta push through this like super fast or anything. Just working through at your own pace is totally okay. You rest as long as you need. Usually um, take enough time as it takes for your heart rate to slow down a bit. So that's a really good way to base how much rest you need because you don't want your heart to just be like bam, 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 bam the whole time. No. If it's starting to do that and you're starting to really feel it pump, just take a moment, sit down, have a sip of water, have a few breaths in and just wait for your heart rate to slow back down. And then once it's slowed back down, then go again. But once it's slowed back down, don't continue to wait. Don't put this off. That's <laughs> why you rest just as long as you need and that's just enough time to allow your heart rate to kind of chill out a little bit. Alrighty, this is our last round with our chest taps. If we're up on our toes, our feet are around hip width apart, our hands are under our shoulders. If we're on our knees, our legs are squeezed nice and tight together, our back is nice and straight, our butt is level with our shoulders, and we're ready to go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Coming down nice. Yes. We made it through the chest taps. Whew. One more round of squats. We ready? Standing it up. Alrighty. It is our last six squats for the session. We're gonna go, remember, setting up our feet. Hip width for somewhere around there, always wider, never more narrow than. Feel free to experiment with your feet until you find that spot that works for you. Some people's feet may be quite a bit wider in their stance than others, because all our hips are different. So our little hip joint sits differently in our socket. So when that happens, the ability for us to squat can be based on how our bones allow our bodies to move. Wow, <laughs> fascinating body stuff. <laughs> so your stance with your squat may be influenced by that. So don't feel like you've got to go super narrow like that's a standard, it's not. It's wherever it is comfortable for you. Alrighty, our last six. Feet are somewhere around hip width, wherever is comfortable for you. Our hands are up at our chest. Remembering, this is the last time, bottom of our six, we're holding it for that 10 seconds. All right, we're gonna go. One. Two. Three. That's our halfway mark. Yes, almost there. Four. That's it. Five. One more, we're building up, we've got this hold now. It's the bottom of our six. We're gonna go down and we're gonna hold. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Coming up out of that. Oh, giving our legs a bit of a shake. Whew, feeling the burn there. We're finished, friends. Well done. Hope you really enjoy this. I hope you discovered some new and interesting things about yourself and the way that you're able to move your body and what you're actually able to achieve. See, introducing movement to our routine just once or twice a week can really make a change. And I hope that you're feeling a little bit energized, a little bit puffed, a little bit like, yes, I just did a thing. 
the thing I did was awesome because the thing you just did was awesome. And I'm super proud of you. You may feel a little bit stiff and sore tomorrow, especially your legs if you haven't done a lot of squats. So drink a bunch of water and try and walk around as normally as you possibly can. And I know uh, you say that now and you will be like, yeah, whatever, Bowie. But trust me, tomorrow, the next day, you will be feeling a bit used. Remember, Bowie says, walk around as normally as you possibly can. You're not gonna want to feel like you wanna take a full step or the toilet seat may never have felt so low in your life, but <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> Keep moving, work through it. It's just a bit of stiff muscles. It's a totally natural thing to happen when we first start introducing movement into our lives. Until Saturday morning, you got a day's rest before we jump back in and just turn things up a little. We've got a medium intensity interval training session coming up on Saturday, which is gonna be just a little bit more intense than this. We're not going too far. We're just gonna do a little bit more. Like we're, we're turning that dial up, just, just like a half, a half a mark. So I hope to see you there. Remember movement also helps relieve sore muscles. So just another good reason for why you should come and train. <laughs> Otherwise I will see you next Tuesday for our live stretch session where you can get a chance to just breathe, relax and move your body in some nice, easy ways that will not at all cause you to become out of breath or sweaty or anything. Have an amazing Thursday, friends. See you later.